let's see, it's Wednesday, so we're going over Monday's footage. So yeah, let's do it. Where are we at? There we go. All right, got to roll with Jason. We've got Justin and Tyler starting us off. Tyler on an arm drag to a go behind. A nice trip. Jason in on a single, but I counter with a front headlock. And then trying to take him over to get a mounted guillotine. Um, pretty crappy setup, though, for me, so. Did not make any progress with it. And it was this Brandon and uh, Caleb over here, I think. Damn, Brandon really sticking through on that single leg. So let's see. For Brandon, this is a good example of when you want to keep your posture a bit more upright. So you guys are just barely on screen. So right here, we could kind of see Brandon's hinged at the hips pretty deep right now. That's going to give Caleb everything he needs to uh, put his weight down on top of him and, and try to sprawl out of this. I don't. I don't think Caleb's trying too hard to hit a sprawl, like his legs straightened out. It's not like kicking backwards, um, but he's got this grip, you know, chest to back and then the grip over the torso. Uh, I think if he wanted to, he could probably stomp his foot to the ground pretty easily here. Just about off screen. And then uh, Brandon follows through, but Caleb gets the re-roll. So on those, on those single legs, like you want to keep your posture more upright um, you know, assuming your head's not like on the outside under the threat of a guillotine. Uh, but that, that posture is to ensure that you don't get broken down and you're not wearing your opponent's weight if he does try to sprawl. It's a little bit easier to recover from there. Let's see how did Jason get mounts? He's got this De La Hiva hook. And it just pops me up and takes me right over. Collar tie. I start addressing the leg. He's got my hips right over his hips now. And I'm pretty much... What's going on, Justin? I'm pretty much going wherever he wants me to go at that point. So up and over it is. And then Tyler... Yes, Tyler's still on Justin's back. From that initial go behind. Justin, you're doing what you do, making a, getting a rear strangle damn near impossible. But Tyler's doing a good job trying to recenter. Gavin, a little slow through that, uh, that sit out here with Jason. Maybe he's maybe he was slowing you down a bit, but definitely try to get out from underneath there. And cut that angle faster than he can square up with you. Not always the easiest thing. You you might be in a race at that point. And who's David going with? Oh, David and Jordan. Okay. That's pretty quiet tonight. Uh, let's see. Jason got to my back with a... Yeah, dude. Get over here! Jameson73747. Thank you for the follow. slow what's up Jameson J 
Jason really had me in a bind here. Um, he did an excellent job immediately setting on the strangle. And I really had to dig myself out. You can tell my grip is... Uh, like, he's winning the grip battle very much here. No, that's not me, Cole. Um, <laughs> it's probably one of you, if I had to guess. Uh, so, uh, Jason is attacking my uh attacking the rear naked strangle um and he's almost to a, a good finishing grip here so let me see if i get a better frame so notice my jesus my left hand is immediately trying to find the knuckles at this point i've lost the the battle for um keeping my neck safe like he's he's either directly over my chin which is not great or he's under my chin at this point, and I'm trying to prevent the, the strangle from tightening up. He's going in for the finish here, and I'm focusing on uh, his secondary hand, the non-strangle hand, um, keeping that from getting behind my head. Once it's behind my head, it's going to be so much more difficult to dig out. So if I can keep that there and maintain my, uh, my primary defensive hand, just pulling down on the wrist because I can't get to the end of... You know, I can't get to the knuckles on the strangle arm. I'm going to buy myself a little bit of time. Maybe try to burn out Jason's arms a bit. Um, maybe get him to look to switch positions. Um, and all of those things you give me opportunities to uh, to escape. Thank you for the resub, Justin. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, dude. He, uh, Cole, Cole saved up all his money to buy a second computer just to troll the stream oh, Luke and Cam good to see Cam back on the mats slowly getting back into it after that uh that broken arm and surgery that he had to deal with uh Justin how'd you get here bud so you eventually gotta okay so Tyler goes for his armbar transition and you just throw those legs right on by and get to an open guard position he opts to play from butterfly so kind of smashing against the butterfly half cutting the angle around nice try to kind of beat the knee there we go some persistent forward pressure to get around the guard. And, you know, that was all, that was largely like, like you get, you get uh, safe, you get into an open guard, you pretty much force half guard, which, you know, I'm always a big advocate for, um, especially when I'm not feeling especially mobile and, uh, or I'm tired or it's the end of the end of the night or the, fourth day in a row I've been training um, working from half guard is definitely a, a better choice in my opinion really trying to dig out of this yeah so Jason opts to switch at that point what's up deathcore how you doing bro Yeah, Jason was definitely close. He uh, he had me in a very, very bad spot by that point. Can't let Luke just body lock you like that, buddy. Yeah, look at Cam fishing for legs. David and Jordan do. Okay, Jordan getting to. Uh, let's see how Jordan gets here. So, Jordan working from bottom half guard and just sitting up. Um, let's see, did he. 
I think he digs for deep half here. This is good. Gets the underhook. There, David made a little error. Anytime someone's digging deep half on me, I'm going to keep the cross face. And I'm going to use the cross face as much as I can. I mean, it, it shuts Luke down. Um, and that's that's good enough for me. If it, if it stops Luke from, from sweeping me from bottom half guard, I, I know it's a good... Uh, a good tactic so here he switches in for the headlock but from this deep half position that just means that jordan can scoot his hips a little bit further underneath uh david far enough to get him off balance so it looks like he's he keeps the uh actually does he use the underhook here i mean it's, he doesn't really need it but sets it up and now he's he was far enough underneath him without that cross face in place to uh get an pretty easy sweep now good david let's go the head there's no reason to keep the head there and jordan goes on the attack with the head and arm strangle so david if you watch this um keep in mind anytime your elbows are above your shoulder line that's bad news right it's um it's just indicative of an isolated arm and an isolated arm is one that can be broken so we try to get our arms back to a better place, uh, elbows below the shoulder line, and give that give that left arm a job. We're looking to get it back in to frame Jordan and create space. When we leave it up high like this and he could uh, get his head underneath, then that's how you end up in a katagatame. Is Tyler really trying to dig? Justin, were you just letting him work there? <laughs> you could have very easily have uh, rolled and regarded if you wanted to. I'm on my own attack now with uh, with Jason here, working from a rear triangle position. But he does very well to shut it all down before, uh, before the bell gets him safe. Jason and Luke, Braden and Mike, Justin and Jason. Yeah, oh, that's fair. Good trip from Jason. Um, see this like rear Tani Atoshi kind of, uh, I believe that's a judo word for it. Um, we'll watch Jason here. He walks Justin forward, gets Justin stepping, and then hits a quick change of, uh, of, of momentum to bring, uh, bring Justin backwards and blocks the foot before Justin can adjust. Guy who won his competition using only turtle? No, uh, that's that, that doesn't sound like a match I'd want to watch, to be honest. But uh, I am curious. I mean, like, if you're calling turtle, it's just like turtling up, you know? Yeah, I've I've never. I guess it is a guard. Like, you don't get points if you if you pass somebody and they rolled a turtle. You haven't passed them, so technically, I guess you could call it a guard, but. Was that was that like a like a black belt doing it or like an old school guy back when turtle was more uh, in vogue? Yeah, send me the, send me the clip. I'd I'd watch it. I'll be bored, but I'll watch it. I mean, did he even like did he attack from turtle or did he just like play defensively? You know, get two points and play defensively and, and win that way. David with uh see how David got to Kesa here. Been there a while. I guess Caleb sits. That's boring. Come on, Caleb. How are you not gonna take down a wrestler? 
I will. Justin, if you if you send it to me, I'll I'll uh I'll give it a look. Convert to light. Eduardo tell us. <laughs> You'll like it, Cole. What's up, Peters? Braden's trying to take your leg off here. <clears throat> so it looked it looked like Braden was putting to work the takedown that we did earlier that day. Um, this is one that Luke likes to teach from open guard, um, where when your opponent's legs, when you catch your opponent's feet close together in a seated versus standing situation, um, it's fairly easy to get the takedown. Braden had a great reaction here. I mean, Mike, your legs are very close together. Um, here, he doesn't collect the far leg, though, and now you've got a, a good base to work with. So, Braden, you're, if you if you can't get that second leg, I want you to completely neglect that takedown and, and either, you know, stand up, wrestle up, whatever, enter into legs. Uh, you're going to have to switch from there. But I can tell just by the way you're keeping your your foot hooked and your body real close to the leg, you're kind of focused on getting that that one singular takedown. You'll have to it, it is a double leg variation, so like you'll have to you'll have to get both legs to do it. Competition test of Chris stuff. Not an actual yeah. I have another video to talk about. All right, now I'm, I guess now I'm curious. <laughs> I know, like, I think it was back bef either around when I started training or before, like, turtling was uh, a whole thing that, like, guys started to build games around. And then it, you know, like all all things in jiu-jitsu, the market adjusted and uh, people worked their way through it. But that may have been before my time. Steven, where is Steven? Oh, he's with uh, he's with Gavin. Yeah, dude, he's super boring. Gavin's trying to break his arm right now. It'll probably will happen. Speaking of arm breaks, Tyler and Jordan. So Jordan's keeping the arms tight, trying to buck here, but Tyler gets the arms separated. Nice, makes a nice transition. That was really really nice. Um, so this Jordan turns to the side that shin over the face is good enough um because he's not going to get the uh he's not going to get the cross face from there but then let's see I think, I think jordan initiates that roll and then tyler makes a nice quick switch to a cross face to uh, control that arm very solid luke in on a we got a rimiyashi switching around a little bit now to an outside Ashi getting smashed by Jason. <laughs> How did Braden get there? Oh, working from north south. Slips a knee in. <laughs> I like that Braden doesn't tr doesn't uh, opt to regard. He sees that he has an opportunity on a on a reverse triangle, which takes a little bit of um it's gonna take a bit more to reverse triangle mike just because his arm was based out and you're gonna have to get that collapsed but that was that was nice thinking Braden. i like that was it uh did it already happen or the was it the attempt on the triangle Good chance the YouTube video is called BJJ Turtle Master vs. Seven Opponents. Okay. <laughs> All right, I got you. So is it one of like uh, Preet's students? I guess then. Luke and J. 
Justin. So now I'm shocked they didn't get to figure four. I'm gonna do it again. I mean, yeah, like knee is maybe a little high for the strangle, like relative to your ear. I just don't. I I wasn't expecting you to say that. Just basic, based on this hand um, being out. Like I didn't see much of a closure there, but. He's trying to grab it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, all right, get off of me. Oh yeah, Cam wanted to thrash me. Cam, Mr. Uh, hey, let's go 50% while I go 100%. see why he sits back on my leg so I go to my standing guard break hit the knee pinch and he tries to Achilles lock me here but big problem uh, he doesn't have my hip under control at all his legs he has inside position on my legs uh, but not in like the traditional sense um, he doesn't have he doesn't have the ability to like control my hip at all or anything like that so once I clear his legs, I'm I'm fine. Even from here, I'm probably fine. I think he can make it a little uncomfortable, but uh, not terrible. From here, it's like, all right, all right. I'm good on the leg attack. How did Caleb get a takedown here? Oh, Mitch sits. Okay, gotcha. Mitch is still recovering from a concussion, so I don't expect to see him standing. Gavin trying to follow through on the armbar. here no Austin does a good job keeping the legs in so the walkers were just all about triangles unorthodox triangles uh, this night I guess like Gavin was about to throw up a wrong way triangle and dig on the uh, Kimura as well Good hip movement from Brandon here to get safe-ish. See if Austin can recover before we go back. Nope. Oh, maybe? No? Yes? No? Brandon, what do you got? Trying for the Achilles. Hands are low. Need your hands higher than that, buddy. Biceps looking big, though. So that's you got that going for you. <laughs> yeah, follow it up. Yeah, all right, cool. That was nice. So let's see. Um, yeah, I'll get to that in one second. With... Looks like... Austin's I think Austin's trying to get behind and I I like what he's doing like trying to grab the far tricep like the cross tricep as he cuts his angle here to try to grab across and pull him in place 
Brandon's got his elbow though tucked very nicely. That's uh, it's in a position that's going to make it really, really difficult for Austin to do anything. So from here, uh, Austin's going to have a hard time cutting the corner. I don't, I th and he's committed the hand to the uh, to the left arm, so he can't like pop that elbow forward and get it out of the way. And then right there, that little hip switch gets Brandon uh, the time he needs to, uh, the time and the space he needs to start working out of here. And then now I, I really love this immediate um, leg threat that he throws up. It's very set on getting these Achilles locks, but like, I mean, I've, I've, I think we've pointed it out on here enough, uh, specifically with Brandon, but like, you know, there are a lot of little finishing mechanics that you need to tighten up here with with raising the hands up higher. Your your configuration of your legs is important on this one too. Um, there's not just one way to do it, um, but you don't have enough, like, this is good, this, this like reverse butterfly hook you have, um, but then I wanna see this leg shooting across and behind, like across the body and then like, back heeling in behind Austin if you're going to use this sort of leg configuration. Um, your hand's a lot higher now. That's great. You just want to keep it up there and keep your chin close to it. It looks like you're kind of trying to just like retain it at this point. Um, I really, really love the chase though. Coming back up, not letting Austin get away and, uh, and taking him down. Yeah, I baited you with a back take so you can hit that head and arm. Gavin. Well, that was like a half-ass chair sit that he he switched to a to a head and arm. That's kind of sick. Let's go to psych. I'm gonna take this instead. Interesting. I wonder if that was a reaction or fully intentional. Like he like he feels like he's not getting the pull here. So he says, let me switch it up and just go to this. Either way, that's, um, I don't know if I've ever seen that like mid, uh, mid back take switch to a, a head and arm. That's cool. Oh, all right. Stream can start. Cooper's here. Yeah, that was just, it was super quick. That's that's why I was it's I can't decide if he did it purposefully or if it was a, a just a solid reaction, but either way that was really awesome. Being merciful with uh Cam's legs. He's also uh, been lifting now for the last three months, as Dad was telling me, and starting to, starting to feel a little baby Cam growing up, and getting uh, getting some some man muscles on him. <laughs> Trying to play with a crossbody ride here I think wait a minute didn't I I gotta find something with, with cam maybe it was I think it was this round I thought I hit him with a twister at one point because I'm not going to attack his arm, so I attack his spine instead. Maybe it wasn't this round. Maybe that was a different day. I don't know. So yeah, we get right to here.
have him in like a kind of a weak crossbody position, but I losing it. I have to just get back up. I, thought, I could have sworn I hit him with a twister. Maybe that was like Saturday. Oh, and we got Pablo back on the mats. Hell yeah. Finally, after his, a long layoff from some injured ribs, which always sucks. I think plenty of you guys have dealt with that too. What's up, Steven? Some crossbody kiss, Cole. Grow up. It's Coop just in time to see your match with Mike. I think. Yeah, that's Mike. the hell out of Jordan here good judgment on uh, on not staying on the back here like just switching back to, to like hips in front of the head working from there rather than uh, being put off balance with no hooks in David up here working working some leg stuff. I don't think we've seen too much leg attacking from him, so that's good to see. Let's see how Jason handles it. Getting the legs peeled open, that's good. Nice. See a back step. Oh, okay. Does a back step instead uh, takes a forward step right around to side control. Pablo was uh was talking about how he <clears throat> felt like he had, you know he'd forgotten a lot of stuff um, just in his in his injury time off but um, what he definitely didn't forget was just some good fundamental positioning um, and and submission escaping principles he wasn't really letting me get too much set up early on um, just doing a good job keeping his arms tight as I was looking for like katakatames and, and uh, things like that. Staying very mobile. Giving up his back there, but uh, working really diligently to get around my guard. All right, Gavin trying to do the double Kouchi. Caleb on a cross Ashi to a leg lace. Let's see if he gets it. Go right here. Brandon is in some trouble right now. So good enough. Um, Caleb, if you really want to like send this home, when you find somebody or when you when you get somebody into a leg lace, um, gable grip is okay. Uh, but you really you want like the tightest grip possible uh, for the or or a very tight grip. So I I opt for elbow to elbow. Um, reason being, one, I want that secondary leg under control. I don't want them to be able to extract it and then immediately you know go on their escapes. Yes, if they extract it, you can like most likely work to your inside heel hook. That's fine if that's like your game plan. But if you are really just trying to finish with the the leg lace. Um, you know, knee bar, calf pressure, Achilles pressure, you know, all the stuff you get out of that. Um, tighten up that grip as you set it up. So it'll keep their leg under control. But then as you go to finish, just like I talk about having high hands to the chin when you're doing like heel hooks and, and Achilles locks, having this tight grip takes the movement of your, your torso, which is what's breaking in these in these twisting locks, uh, it takes the movement of your torso and it goes one to one into their leg. Whereas with the gable grip, there's a chance for slippage or motion um, that isn't one to one. So any any sort of uh, twist you put in with the body, you might lose with a gable grip. With an elbow to elbow grip, that tighter option, it's all going to go into breaking the leg.
I thought you were more of a Jurgens guy. What have Luke and Austin been up to over here? Over there on the left side. Luke in a top half guard, switching to side control with the Kimura, it looks like. Yeah. It's on that warpath. On the double. Austin doesn't get the guillotine in time. Here, going for my uh, playing around with S grip for this Katagatame. Um, you know, maybe I maybe I thought ah I'll wipe out, you know, just play around with it and see how it works. And Pablo was like, yeah, I'm not I'm just gonna let you have this one. So he was doing a very good job initially turning towards me and not even really letting me dismount, like keeping me from uh, getting the angle on this move, which. I am fully convinced that I need every bit of the angle. Um, while some of you guys can probably finish this mounted, or definitely, I know, like Luke likes to finish this mounted. Um, but then once I once I got off here, um, he was he was really fighting it. I chalk it up to probably poor shoulder placement on my part. Um, again, that's like my worst strangle. But Pablo wasn't having it. What match of mine did I miss? Psh, I don't know, man. You got to be here. You missed all of them. That's what. All the ones before Mike. I don't. I don't remember, to be honest. And I ain't going back. Man, I haven't rolled with Jordan in a bit. And the more I watch, the more I'm scared too. So depending on my training partner, I, I'm normally focused on working on something different. With Luke, I don't think I'm going to be able to work, you know, katagatames with S grips, right? Um, so for him, it's, you know, we start standing. Um, and I'm really trying to focus on staying as nimble and mobile as I can. Uh, especially if I if I take a shot or something and my pot or he breaks my posture down very easily staying out from underneath his body weight and that's what happens on this exchange here so he gets his collar tie snaps me down pretty well and just immediately starts coming forward and i'm just i'm trying to find every angle i can out and away um either behind or to the side or or backing up from him which isn't my favorite to do <laughs> i mean even even right there that was See, he breaks me down, and I like, I felt the the makings of a guillotine, which is why I'm keeping my. It's hard to see, but I'm keeping my left hand by his elbow. Right there, he he switches to like a front headlock grip. You can see his his right arm coming over top of my head. So I'm anticipating a guillotine now. Sets up with a collar tie again. Goes guillotine on the with his left arm. But he doesn't keep the hand in front of me. So the, the little twist out that I was trying to do here that would like put a Kimura on would uh it, it didn't work since he didn't stick to the guillotine. That's that uh Udi Geishi. Udi Geishi I talk about sometimes. Yeah, dog, watch the replay. And subscribe too. So Luke takes his shot. Um, quick sprawl. And I run around not to take the back, but as he starts to come up from here, because um, you know, I'm not I'm not laying 300 pounds of pressure on him. Um, so he thinks I'll stand up as he as he lifts the leg up, grab it, keep the head under control, and try to run 90 and uh, keep him to his back. And then now you can see immediately he's starting to 
dig deep half on my leg. What do I do? Exactly what we talked about with David and Jordan earlier. I set up my cross face and I keep it. I don't want to don't want to let him get to the uh, get to the cross face. Good, you better be. Why does your screen name color keep changing? That's cool. I wish everybody said that. Do we have any seamstresses in our gym? I need some pockets shown sut on a pair of shorts. I can't say that sentence without sounding drunk. I believe you. You're the youngin' in the chat. You probably know all the secrets here for uh, making Twitch cooler. So Mike and Jordan, let's see. Jordan was on top not long ago. So Mike gets his overhook. I imagine we're looking at like a Sumigeshi from here. So there we go, over under. Excellent sweep. So you guys, um, since this is open guard week, this is probably something you guys should be practicing, putting yourself into, seeing if you can get through this. Um, whatever just as a reminder whatever side your underhook is on that's where your leg is going to be a butterfly hook and then the other leg you can see it emerging right past Mike's butt his bottom leg is that power leg and especially against opponents who are bigger than us we need every bit of power uh, every bit of like thrust off the ground that we can get to get our opponent over that power leg that's that's lagging behind is what's going to let Mike lift his hips up and pressure through on this. And then once once Jordan's over, he can settle into top position and get to work. Yeah, man, you just got to share with the rest of the class how to do cool stuff, man. So now Mike with a cross face and, oh, I thought he was about to reverse that grip um, and go for the, the Kimura there, but Jordan gives him a good bridge. Nice. Jordan's looking powerful, man. I mean, Mike's fully based out at this point. Um, Jordan beats him on hip height. Keeps the knee pinned and steps over. Yeah, you want to get that. You want to close that space as soon as you can, Jordan, from the knee into the hip. That will shut down, uh, well, partially shut down some of Mike's impending um, escape attempts. But then, yeah, so. Kind of neglecting the wrist grip that Mike gets here. Um, and Mike is pretty notorious from bottom half guard of working on, working with a two-on-one on, one on the, the arm that he's facing, right? The, the arm that uh, typically isn't fighting the underhook battle. Mike loves to go two-on-one on, one on that arm and use it for sweeps, use it for Kimuras. Um, they're, they're, you know, even that uh, over back, you know, octopus guard grip we've talked about lately like if he controls that arm and, and can throw it by he can start working that so got a little forgetful on that arm intellect intellect uq i don't know if that's how you pronounce it thank you for the follow appreciate you oh you're a bot get out of here Same reason I always get a red name on the chat display. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm too get old. Get over here! Another follow. The Penguin. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. As long as you're not a bot.
What did I miss? Anything special? Supposed to scare you, man. It's Mortal Kombat, baby. I assume so. Oh, Sawyer? Sawyer following now? Hell yeah. What's up, Sawyer? I, uh, yeah, I assume it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know how any of that works. I'm not really chasing algorithmic bumps. I just want you guys to learn a little bit more, right? And also follow and subscribe. Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Cooper. Chat keeps distracting me. We got Pat sneaking in here. I haven't seen Pat on camera yet. Also, what has Luke done to me so far? Anything? There's the takedown. Oh, yes. <laughs> I about get... I, I managed to elevate Luke here. So, it, at, let's see if I can capture. At some point... So, here I'm working from a butterfly half. Um, I get the elevation. I slip my right leg underneath. And I'm... Almost in on cross, cross Ashi now. My problem is I haven't collected that right leg of his. So his heel is back and away. So you can see I'm, I'm pushing him back with like that cr kind of cross shoulder frame. And trying to dig this leg out. Just as I get the leg, Jordan and Mike crash into us. And I'm like, move, move now. <laughs> and it uh, doesn't matter because nothing happened. Luke immediately, Luke took the time to dig my leg out and now uh, goes on a counter attack. So, sorry for yelling at you, Mike and Jordan. How am I supposed to pronounce E-I-J-I? -I? Is that E-J-I? E-J? I'll just call you penguin. What did he do there? Oh yeah, he immediately lay, lays on a quick, uh, quick strangle and gets me. Pull a guard quick on the leg. Get it. Reap. Got the heel. Nothing. Got to get him moving, Mitch. E-G-E. -E. All right. Whatever you say. Ooh, all right. So David's got himself almost in a bad spot here. Kind of getting to like a leg ride position there briefly. Um, except really just putting himself into a cross Ashigarami. It looks like Mike isn't really pursuing it too heavily. But you got to be careful when you're when you're uh, kind of taking some of those knee cuts in odd positions like that. Okay. I look forward to it. Mike sets up a shoulder crunch here. Oh, no, not just the shoulder crunch. Going to the, uh, the uh, Udigatami straight arm bar that we've been practicing a bit. Um, without the leg configuration here. So not, not so much from the clamp guard as we've seen. That was the other variation I think we were practicing. Um, it looks like Mike could opt to do either a sweep because, you know, where his, where his foot is, um, his right foot. 
Like he could, I think Mike could easily, I mean, obviously he can come up on the sweep here, but I feel like he's got a good bite on the arm and he knows it. Nice. It's another language. Why is it written in American? Jordan's the one who needs to take a class on the English language. Look at how he's typing. Mike with another another sweep here. So similar. Okay. Actually, did he? So that this is a shoulder crunch this time. So Mike. Instead, opts to go for the sweep rather than the straight arm. Maybe Jordan rolls with it to try to get a re-roll, but uh, Mike's base is a little too good for that. Whatever, I didn't even want him on here to begin with then. If he doesn't want to be here, I don't want him to be here. Thank you. He put us up to 211 followers, probably 210 once they kick off all the bots accounts. Um, what did Gavin do to me? So Gavin with the back take and there. So Gavin, I was curious why, why he did this. This isn't bad. Uh, but when it happened, it's, it struck me as a little odd. He steps the leg over, and if he plants the foot, he's going to set himself up for a body triangle, which I'm pretty sure he could actually do to me. Um, but instead, he opts to go hook instead. Um, I don't know why. I'm, I'm not going to say it's wrong. Uh, immediately gets the arm trap on the leg and sets in a really quick guillotine or a rear naked strangle. And then, Jordan, you're in a unique position here. Mitchell, you left yourself in some trouble getting the one arm in and the one arm out. Now, Jordan has a chance to kind of settle in, collect himself, uh, as well as your head and arm, and set up a mounted triangle, which I don't think he does here, but Jordan, I feel like you know it's there. Oh, nice. Good. Well, he earned it then. Reddit told me this was bad. Told you what was bad. Where are you, Steven? Are you are you rolling with uh, Luke right now? I think that's you. That's bad. Yeah, Luke's just smashing right by your guard. Uh, where were we? Jordan the mounted, almost a mounted triangle position. <laughs> it's a great joke. Lamal. Yeah. Yeah, Luke hasn't competed in a while, and um, I forgot what competition Luke is like. But it's fun. I. I Hope you guys enjoyed giving 100% against Luke as much as I do. Because you get to, like, you get to club him a bit and, like, you know, be a little bit more mean because you know he's going to be mean to you, too. about getting up good pressure from Mitch here <laughs> yeah yeah that is an apt description 
Um, so Jordan, I, like, I don't know if you're experimenting or what. I'm not. I don't see too much benefit in doing this. You're fighting a, you know, arm against a leg, uh, typically a losing battle. Um, you could pretty easily sprawl out of that. I do like this though. I think, um, I think Mitchell just got the jump on you here. He gets, he kind of wins the head height battle, and is able to power through. And then now puts on the smash. Really, really good off balancing from Gavin here. Check this out. So as I'm moving forward, Totally kicks my leg out from underneath me. Let's see where his other leg is. So he, okay, he gets to double inside. And I think I'm stepping away. But the, the important thing about that is even if I'm not, even if he's not kicking my leg, like if he's not the one pushing my leg away with this, this is what I was like railing on you guys about when you're doing the, the double Kouchi, it's having that constant outward pressure. So if I'm the one moving my leg, his leg needs to be tracking 100% the whole way and more so if he's putting um, extra outward pressure on it. So that's why my my stance here gets messed up because he's, he's following my leg. He's not just like, he's not just tracking it he's pushing it beyond where my body thought it was going to go with that constant outward pressure and then once he gets me off balance he knows he probably is going to so he gets the jump on the reaction and immediately goes into a leg attack and a good one he's got my knee captured he's on a heel hook um, he gets the roll through and then i just yell at him for a uh, heel position and now once once the heels get get to where uh, I've been telling him to get him to it was good everything else feels like it's pretty tight um, he's got like the chin and hand position he's got down all that stuff so um, killer little sequence right into the finish there all based off some open guard principles we've been practicing quick double leg Get around to the side so he can't strangle me with the final 10 seconds. There have been times where, like, Luke and I have trained, speaking of clubbing each other, and, like, I don't think he ever means it, but he'll lay one on you that just, like, turns your vision white for like a second like you just you, you just have like a visual white out and you come back and you're you're <laughs> you're like okay do i get to do one now and then you still hesitate because you're like well he's gonna do another one if i do that or you just do it anyway and accept the consequences Austin trying to double doesn't quite get underneath Justin though. So I really like the setup. I feel like Austin almost had that um, kind of opens the arms up as he lowers his level. A little faint. Boom goes for it. Just you. So the knee position here is what gives it away, man. Like, you know, they're, they're called penetration steps for a reason. Like you've got to, you have to, lower your level and break that pane of glass between the legs and even if you so like even if you aren't necessarily using that you know per se um, you still need to get your shoulders underneath your opponent's hips your knees when they just drop straight down justin is you know his hips are so far away from you that i don't care how strong you are you're not going to lift him out of that um, you might be able to pull yourself in with that grip you have on his knees or like disrupt his balance from there um, but that was such a nice setup. I, I feel like you should have gotten that. It just, you had to shoot in underneath. 
And then from here, man, you might even be able to like uh, still finish it. I just need you moving. I can't have you working from like uh, this kneeling position. Also depends on what Justin's doing to your neck right now, but. <laughs> I I feel like you've you've definitely done that to me a lot. That's that's the that's what Camden did to me. Look, let's go fifty percent. That just bull rushes me. So Luke working the classic arm bar into the triangle. I think. Oh no, wait. Okay, so Mitch Mitch actually again he's he's sneaking one arm out, but he's putting himself in trouble when he does that. So he gets the he gets the arm out, but he is not out of the woods yet. So Luke gathers everything. And the way he rolls up and pressures, that's exactly what Luke wants. So he sets up the triangle and gets the finish. Meanwhile, Caleb, be nasty over here. Um, this is interesting. So Caleb is actually in a front triangle position. Um, this is normally, you guys have heard me say a bunch lately, uh, front triangle and armbar, cousins, wrong way, and the Kimura. Those are cousins. So he's got a front triangle right now, but watch what he does. He gets, uh, Pablo starts um, posturing back up. And rather than tucking that arm, which Pablo really should be doing, uh, he kind of leaves it out and Caleb takes full advantage of it. So he doesn't go for the arm bar on the, um, on the arm as you normally see. He actually goes for the Kimura. Um, yeah, right there. That looks super deep and super uncomfortable. Probably not going to see that too frequently. Um, but way to catch it when you have it. Dude, where's, where's Josh? Why isn't Josh in the chat bothering us? Just because he cut his finger, he can't he can't study tape. Yeah. That's right. Coop, my hype man. What Justin, what'd you do? You heard Austin? Did you put him unconscious here? It's like shoulder pressure, maybe? What, what was happening there? Or are you just, are you like, is this just a Katagatame from the opposite side with his forearm doing the other job of the strangle? <laughs> yeah, he's he's got nine other fingers to cut. Justin, what's going on here? If you recall, that's this is that's what it looks like. No idea. So head and arm choke, right? Katagatame, you know that. You're just trying to look cool for all your friends, um, right? But from the from a, a standard arm triangle, you're normally on this side when you go to dismount and also the arm isn't tangled up in it here so it looks like a quote-unquote wrong side arm triangle with his arm like his forearm blocking one side and then his shoulder digging in on the other side of the neck um, I have no idea what's going on here it's a little pressure sub I've been playing with uh, next time I see you I want you to do it to me see how real it is that's interesting I mean, Austin isn't, uh, he's not going to tap to BS usually, so. Shoulder pressure, like you said. First, yeah. I, I, that's a, it's an interesting move. I wonder if you could set that up with, um, the gift wrap maybe? Like, I mean, how did you get here? So you got here from north-south. That sucks. 
Like, that's never comfortable. Um, you could catch somebody, torque them up like that. I mean, <clears throat> I don't see too many people putting themselves in this position. Like, like Austin kind of slipped his hand in there, probably not thinking there was any real risk. But I wonder if you could set this up with a gift wrap. Like, if you were in mount and your left arm would be gift wrapping uh, Austin's arm into position here, and then you can come over, like, you could go chest to chest or, like, you know, chest behind the tricep, really, and then maybe settle into this. The hand in there actually kind of in the way. Mike stopped that in the next roll or two. Okay. I don't know. I'm curious now, man. That's even even with the hand in there. I feel like maybe there's maybe there's something there. I don't know. Um, I think Rush actually showed me before he left. Uh, again, if you if you were to uh, dismount, but to the other side, and but you kept Austin's arm across here. the body. And like sat into like a compression strangle kind of position. It could be. It, it it's very similar to like the you know camel clutch compression choke kind of setup too. So not not too far off from this move, which, you know, will make anybody with tight shoulders probably tap. Brody locks, thank you for the follow. <clears throat> yeah, remind me, man. I wanna I wanna go over this. That'll be. That'll be interesting to play with. Luke on another arm bar, but this time with a shoulder uh, triangle sort of setup. So rather than the cross face, which is important, right? I'm not I'm not going to say it's not important. Um, you can still finish an arm bar without it, though. And as you see, Mitch calmly, cool and collected gets rid of the cross face but the problem is now when he goes to sit up in this direction luke is going to be hanging his his the weight of his legs and his lower body what's up brandon how you doing buddy um luke's going to be hanging the the weight of his legs off mitch's shoulder so it's going to be very difficult for mitch to sit up here on top of that when mitch decides well i can't sit up maybe i could try, try a turning escape this leg, Luke's right leg, is now, the shin is behind Mitchell's head. So when Mitchell goes to turn out this way and do like a rolling escape, he can't because uh, Luke's leg is blocking the way. So this shoulder, I think like Dan and her boys call it like the shoulder Senkaku armbar or something like that. Um, it's actually a really, really interesting way to finish those armbars. Brandon, I'm so glad you're here. It is this Brandon, just barely off screen sitting with Jordan. Where's Paul Brandon been? He's not in chat, so I can't give him shit. The <laughs> Does that clear it up, Steven? <laughs> that actually might not clear it up. very tired I think that's how we started this round talking about how tired we were so I just sat to guard and he just wants to sit to a knee bar
And I just want to ankle pick him. It's ankle picking season. Quick guard pass. Notice where Steven's starting from. He's not, he's not, uh, his hips aren't south of my shoulder line. Like, he's all, he's almost to a north-south. This is that, you were doing this, uh, we saw you doing this a couple months back on, uh, Joe, and then Joe started doing it to everybody, too. Like, this really, really high side control step over and amount. Kind of, like, don't even see it coming. Josh is only, or uh, Cole's only 75% of a person right now. Once his arm heals, he can be fully 100. So, in case Mitchell is tired of being yelled at and wants to know what I'm talking about. So with Steven and Mount, um, we saw Mitchell, I think I pointed out two times now, where he sneaks one arm out but not the other when uh, someone is mounted on him. So as Steven pops the knee up here, probably looking to take the back, you see both of my hands sneak out right there. I'm not I'm not just hooking one and then um, hoping for the best or you know relying on a big bridge. I get both hands out. I bridge Steven up and over very weakly. It doesn't work. But as he rolls up and is in a position normally that would be very good for a triangle, because I have both arms out, there's no triangle to deal with. So I, I really, really focus on, on uh, keeping my right hand out there, especially until I can get safe. He transitions to the legs. I say, cool, let's do it. And I'm back to guard. I'm going to say your math checks out. I'm not going to check it myself. Ankle pick. One more time. Wow. I lied. A couple more times. Um, I've been doing this a lot lately. Uh, one, because it's open guard week. But... Um, just, you know, remember, remember guys, like that whole double Kouchi thing. Great. I love it. I love seeing it when it works. Uh, you know, when someone is in a staggered stance and you can't do it, I want to see you guys, you know, bugging the feet and all that stuff. Um, when they get wise to your game though, this is always there. It's always a quick, uh, plan C for your, uh, for your open guard sweeps and everything. I'm doing it a bit supine right now like i'm laid down uh it's not the most athletic position to do this from i guess maybe i get out of that briefly here with with that leg pulled back um when you do ankle picks you really should be focusing on standing up immediately after i'm kind of lazy with it here i just get the pick um and then steven immediately pops up because it's the fourth time in like 48 hours it's happened to him um but yeah so keep that in mind you know the leg game <laughs> One, one more attempt. The leg, uh, you know, bugging the feet with your feet is always great, but there's always this this quick um, ankle pick there. Your hands are so much closer to their ankles when you're seated versus standing, um, and a lot of times your opponents can forget that. So take advantage, and don't let it slip out like that. That was kind of a sloppy one anyway. Pat. Oh, oh, I was just about to say your posture was so good. You're avoiding anything from Luke. And now you're not. <clears throat> no sweet points, none at all. But I got I got uh, style points, and I could tell it really affected your morale, uh, which is all I cared about. You're like, why does he keep doing this to me? Maybe I just need to quit. Um, I go for my own triangle here. Uh, but this this is a, a wrong way triangle. Um, so keeping the posture. Notice immediately attacking the elbow. I know I'm going to throw my legs up into this. And I don't want Steven hiding the hand uh, or the arm early. So I try to get a hold of everything as I set up my trap triangle. 
um, keeping his posture as broken as I can as I work to the triangle position. I can't just throw it up nice and easy like you guys can. So I climb my way up there. My ankles are crossed, or they were crossed. Now I get to it. Uh, not the most, I mean, this is a good enough triangle. I'm not like straightening out my right foot, but because I, I was able to capture that arm early and pull that elbow up and away, it made hiding the arm much more difficult. Um, and then I could go in on that Kimura. Yeah, Coop, that's what I was saying. Thanks. I'm going to put you in timeout if you say it again. I'm just kidding. I feel like if you guys knew that bothered me, that's all the chat would turn into. False. I think short legs are harder to heel hook. How about that? Don't tell Mike I said that though, please. Did Pat and Luke ever, there was no sub out of that, was there? Look at Luke waiting for Pat to get his hand to the mat. Luke was ready to jump on that Kimura. happened there like a little knee push did uh pat sat over his crossed ankles i think i'm not in a timeout corner you're in a timeout corner you can't time me out so you're in the timeout corner sitting over here not training it's a five minute timeout I don't even know what a restaurant is. I'm trying to smother Steven, but it'll never work. I don't know why I try. But as he comes up, I set up another triangle attempt. Um, this is good because he, he's got the underhook here, but he leaves that other arm on the ground and it makes it easy for me to hit the step over entrance. Um, I don't do anything with it here. I don't think I get the triangle, but um, he was tired of me triangling him at this point. Luke riding to a high mount. He's got Pat's arm isolated with the elbow pretty high up. Switch is probably going for his own smother at this point. No. Does the back take? guys come over here it's Pablo and Jason there we go Justin and Mike good sprawl from Jason oh, here we go Caleb and Luke this easily let's see how Luke does this so working from a half guard sits up to get a guillotine and I think Caleb let that go a little too long I think Luke thinks he's got something here uh, based on his reaction and even if it is defensible uh, defendable um, it's enough to get the sweep I would happily take going against Caleb. So much turtling. Like, not just turtling. Like, Caleb looks like he's doing, like, um, a nuclear drill. Like, he's under, he's under the desk, you know, covering his head and his ears, <laughs> waiting for the bomb to drop. <laughs> He 
He probably has no idea what that is. Justin, you're trying your hardest not to let Mike roll you out of that position. Just no easy feat. Uh, Mike with the over back grip. And you countering. Uh, who gets this? Damn, that was interesting. I'm curious if, if you had kept like that deep of a grip on this, I wonder how how that would have played out. Like he, he about knee slips or like slips the knee out. So you're stuck with like just the hands of the foot. Caleb on the knee bar. But on the side where Luke can easily defend because he's got his uh, he's got his leg free. Jam the knee forward. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, like to get to get the the grip off. Yeah. So let's see if Caleb can improve this at all. So the way he's the way Caleb's coming into this, um, like this isn't wrong. Here, like I don't want this to be construed as like the bad or wrong way to do a knee bar. You just have to understand that if you fully committed to this bottom leg like this and you don't have the other leg trapped in any way, typically with like your body weight wedging it in place, it's gonna be just a little bit easier to get out of. Um, doesn't mean you can't finish it or transition uh, to another leg, uh, leg entanglement, um, which boom, he does right there, right? He starts going up into cross Ashi. <laughs> which, Luke, uh, I think what they're talking about now, Luke is not going to have to deal with heel hooks because IBJJF is stupid. Um, you only do heel hooks in the adult division. Not, for some reason, masters aren't good enough for heel hooks, but whatever. I'm kind of laughing at about my school. <laughs> okay. I'll try to remember. I'm sure it was uh, despicable. Mitchell was doing a great job here of regarding. Like I was, I was stepping by here and there, um, but he's not accepting these positions. He's moving his hips, um, getting his legs up, and like high stepping over. Uh, as best he can. I mean, I, I close the distance there and get past. But uh, leading up to that, he was throwing a lot of uh, really good defense at me that I had to redirect. Let's see, I just want to see how Luke fought this off. So I think after their conference, they switched to outside Ashi here. Which, if Luke gets his leg free, he's got back exposure. Okay. So he instead uh, disengages, gets his secondary leg into play, and opens the leg entanglement up. Caleb was not quick enough to get up. And he's back to the nuclear drill. And yes... Mitchell just unlocked the Maki Komi. We're all screwed now. Between him, Caleb, Daniel, all the big guys are going to be rolling us around. Oh yeah, I'm sure it's definitely not worth putting on Twitch then, Coop.
round. Let's see, we got one more round left. All right, me and Mikey, Steven and Justin, and David and Luke. Cool. Thanks for hanging out, Deathcore. Really appreciate you, bro. Have a good one, man. Oh, we do need to watch this one. <laughs> nah, man. How could he? You're in top position right now. <laughs> we'll go with the first one. <laughs> um, I'm going to pay some attention to David and Luke here. Did Luke... Okay, I think Luke sits... Oh, uh, he goes for his, like, little single leg trip. I'm doing some leg pummel passing attempts. Managed to get by. And um, Mike knows exactly what I'm doing here because he does it to me and everybody all the time. Uh, but this was, this was kind of an interesting moment as it was happening. He knows I'm looking to dig that arm up and move uh, to north south and start working from you know dorsal kimura position or whatever but as he um, as he was resisting it i could tell that i could just easily move his hand from from here to up the uh above the shoulder line instead just in in the way he was resisting it um like as he as he took his hand there to like frame i i kept my wrist grip and then just began pushing it up further in the other direction to start trying to set up, you know, either an arm triangle or um, an Americana since I had the shin pin. And I, I think you guys should should remember, I'm probably you're probably never going to see me attempting Americanas without that cross uh, cross side shin pin that I'm using here, right? That's going to keep the shoulders pinned to the mat. It's going to prevent them from... Um, turning to the submission as I try to lay it on. But he did a, a good job here fighting that off. But now I, I try to go back to the dorsal stuff, keeping the, el the uh, elbow isolated. Killer takedown. So, let's see, how did, I think Luke, oh, this is good. All right, so Luke, bottom position, like bottom half guard. Gets David's arms on the same side of his body in front of him. With the tight waist grip, he comes up top. David says, I'm not hanging out here. Luke's trying to hang on here. Doesn't want David getting too mobile. Doesn't want him getting his hips away. But he doesn't have the best grip. He's got like a seatbelt grip, which isn't doing him any favors in standing. I think he switches to a lower grip here, maybe. Yeah, right there. Gets uh, uh, double underhooks from from the rear. And then now, let's see. It's hard to tell if Luke is forcing him forward or if David's running forward. But as he is, Luke hits a quick change. Takes him in the opposite direction. You could tell where all of David's weight is by where his hips are relative to his feet. His hips are behind him, so he's pushing backwards. Um means Luke's probably the one pushing this forward, if that's the case. And then Luke says, cool, I'm going to keep you going in that direction. Um, I think Luke was trying to hit the trip here, and David steps by. Uh, but he stays on that single, on that on that leg, and uh, manages to secure the takedown from there. Steven beginning the the uh, the train. <laughs> Man, Steven's liking the uh, the crossbody stuff. So he escapes out the back, but then sets up the lower body uh, setup with the, the uh, scorpion or the lockdown to the uh, like the crossbody ride position. Switches from the. Remember, a crossbody ride is going to be control over the leg and control over the opposite arm. So once once Steven gets that leg in, he he leaves the crossbody position and just goes fully onto attacking the legs and gets the banana split. Meanwhile, I'm taking my time trying to get to mount. 
as soon as I get there, Mike doesn't let me have it. Yeah, he hit, I mean, I don't know if you saw the stream, one of the last ones, one of the more recent ones, he, he hit one on me. It was nasty. <laughs> Knee slicing by, settling into side control. And I'm working the same sort of approach I was doing before with the shin pin, but now just opting for mount points to get settled in. I'm trying to do the stuff that, uh, that Gary was telling me uh, when I asked him about how he likes to um, combat the... Uh, kipping escape he says normal like planting the hands and then pushing the hips down and back because you remember people are trying to bridge you forward and then kip their way out so if you keep your hips low and pressured backwards um, you're gonna take away some of that uh, some of their ability to actually hit the kipping escape I, I realize you know I start doing it I'm giving my trouble with it but I, I start to lose it and I dismount I would rather I would rather feel the kipping escape coming forward and then dismount on my own terms than to have it than than to like hang on and have him enter the legs easily because I was too stubborn to uh, go to a lesser pin, you know. What's Steven doing over here? He's on cross Ashi now. Damn, I wish I could see what he got. I'm assuming... Did he get to a heel hook? Maybe a, maybe a straight ankle? Because I don't... Or was it a heel hook? I thought that other foot was the... Ah, good toe hold, okay. Damn, you did a toe hold on... Did you do it on the primary leg here? Because it it looks like th uh, this is, is the primary leg, so I don't see you doing anything to it. The toe hold... Oh, I missed... Oh, okay. Sorry, Justin. Oh, is this the... <laughs> is this like the Craig bullshit? Oh, is this this is what you were trying to do to me? You weren't trying to sit through on a knee bar. You were trying to do this like step back toe hold through the legs BS from uh, Polaris <laughs> or Quintet, not Polaris. I mean. What is so different about this? Maybe. So I, I'm, I'm spitballing here because I, I know I know you know one of the pros does something cool and then we're all like, let's break it down, and do it in class to each other. But a benefit I kind of see from this is rolling with the toe hold is like the escape. But um, if this leg of yours, Steven, backsteps in between Justin's legs here, that would block his ability to turn. Um, the, how much power you could crank into it. So I don't think it's any more special than any other toehold. Um, Especially because, like, like you're not you're not putting your legs into it. Like your legs are on the ground; they're not like on him, pressuring into him. Um, a proper, you know, a good toe hold. You're gonna have that high hand position to the chin, um, and you're gonna have the the torque of your body, which all of those things check out here. So I don't, I don't see a benefit in that regard. I could be wrong, um, but the inability for him to turn if you do get this leg in between his legs um, could be an advantage, maybe. I don't know. 
It's because it makes it roll out more difficult. I mean, I assume we're saying the same thing. That's that's my thought. Like, because there's nothing there's nothing mechanically different about it, from what I can tell. And even if you even if that leg isn't up the middle, I feel like you could follow through on it pretty easily. Like you're mobile, you're standing, right? So you're more mobile than your opponent. And then uh, you said this was just a straight ankle. Yeah, Mike, I've had I've had the Discord up, so <laughs> I just assumed that you weren't in a that you weren't on your your rig at home. Luke has made his way to David's back at this point. It's not looking good. Yeah, so that was tight. Looks like David was, he was gonna try to defend the feet with the, the hands and he's doing it. He and I talked about this, so I'm not, I'm not upset to see him doing this. He's using the bottom arm, which is the safe one. He's just in too deep at this point. This is over the chin, um, which we all know still sucks. Um, so he's, He's past the point of making his way out. I think he would be better off using this hand to find these knuckles. Um, but even then, this is a this is a real tall order to try to get out of this one by now. Austin looks like he's standing, but his pants are pulled up really high around his body. Like it's just a very distorted picture. David trying to throw either a cement mixer on there. Something. Pull him around, get him off base. Similar to the takedown I got on him earlier. That cradle. Uh, let's see, did... Steve, you get anything else on this one? I didn't get my cross Ashi. Nothing. Just a really good shoulder crunch. Is it from uh, the other group? Oh, yeah, Steven did get a Kamori here. Oh, the shoulder crunch I hit on you? Forgot about that. Yeah, I want to celebrate that because... I don't ever get those on you. And then we'll look at, uh... Well, actually, first, let's look at what Steven gets here, so... From a loose half guard. Yeah, Justin, you just got caught here, man. He catches me with these two. Like, I, I'll, I'll leave... I'll have a hand on the knee. Like, I'm not even breaking the rules, you know, putting the hand on the mat or anything. And he'll... He'll reach up and over on me and I'm like all right I'm going I'm flipping I'm, I'm turning whatever take mount whatever you got to do and then yeah so there with the cross face <clears throat> but the reason this worked out for me I think Mike and I talked about this my legs were already in a pretty advantageous position so as he as he's pressuring forward on this um, I can get him stretched out really well to the side where he has no base at this point. So this is just a, a standard, you know, fundamental shoulder crunch. Um, was the last roll recorded with my guy? No, it wasn't. I um, I didn't realize you guys were training, and I, I had uh, turned off the camera about, like, 10 seconds into the roll. So sorry, man, especially if there was some, like, if you, like, subbed Mike or something. I really, I really, really apologize. Um. But yeah, so I get him stretched out. I get the hand, or I'm sorry, I get the foot on the on the leg. And I'm not even in a good spot for that. I, I'd prefer to be down by the knee than up by the hip. Um, and then I have my hook elevating here. So there I make the switch to get the, the foot down to the knee. Once I get the push out of the way, I've got to make the, the uh, switch to get the, the hip height. And then I can kind of settle in. 
really try to keep the arm under control, but um, Mike does an excellent job of getting me off base just as soon as I get there. So again, rather than being uh, kipped and then having to figure out what to do, I just opt to go into the cross Ashi position from there. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Steven. I didn't. I didn't realize that that was uh, that that was happening when I turned the camera off. I always I always like to see you guys beating up Mike and I, so I didn't do it maliciously. Um, but yeah, I didn't. But I tried my best. But it wasn't it wasn't good. <laughs> um, thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Thank you for all the messages. Always make the uh, you always make the chat interesting. And I appreciate that. So. Um, thank you for all the follows too. I uh, really, really appreciate it. And any, uh, if you guys like what you're seeing, please subscribe as well. You can use your Twitch Prime for free. It really helps us out. And um, go subscribe over on YouTube as well. Where we will post this for you to review. In the meantime, please uh, thank you, Stephen. Please keep bringing your best to class. Uh, make sure you're beating the shite out of uh, Luke. And uh, thank you, Brandon. And thank you for the follow, Brandon. I'm so happy to, to have you on here now because I could yell at you directly. Um, thanks, Mike. Thanks for, uh, thanks for commenting and everything. Um, yeah, in any case, uh, yeah, keep bringing all your, all your A-game to class. Let's beat the shit out of Luke. Um, get him ready for the competition. And, um, yeah, we'll finish up this open guard week, and then we'll be moving on to half guard. So hope you guys are ready for that. Um, in the meantime, go trim your nails and do your laundry and don't be stinky and we will see you back on the mats later. <laughs>